Matters with Paul Rosen. Our diets, our Western diets in America are just really, you just don't realize how poor they really are. What would you say to others who would like to feel better? Sometimes you need to find the instructions. That's where the testing and everything comes in because without that knowledge, there's no way I could have got to the point where I'm at today. Straight talk about health. And then I start preaching and telling them what I've been doing. <laughs> and this guy named Paul Rosen has changed my life. With your host, Paul Rosen. By the way, the information contained in this program is not approved by the FDA nor intended to treat, diagnose, or claim to cure any medical condition or disease as defined by Western medicine. However, skilled practitioners of many disciplines have found nutrition response testing to be a highly reliable, supportive technology for assessing the health and fitness of the body's functional system. According to the World Health Organization, Paul Rosen, the most dangerous animal in the world is not a tiger, a crocodile, a rabid dog. The most dangerous animal is the mosquito. The That's world, right. The World Health Organization says about 725,000 people a year are killed by mosquito-borne diseases. What else is dangerous? Well, some people say vitamin supplements are dangerous, but are they? We'll find out this hour here on Health Matters. Well, it turns out <clears throat> that vitamin supplements are 63,000 times safer than prescription medications, yet you often hear how dangerous they might be. Then the question is, uh, are they really effective? And we're going to speak to that. Shall we move on to Frontier Pete? Let's check in with him. A moment with me, Frontier Pete. All natural woodsman on a mission with my pal, Rapper Charlie. Investigating Farmer Hank's place here. Hey, fellas, thanks for visiting the farm. What's up, Hank? I want you fellas to see my new vitamin supplement enhanced farming operation. Vitamin supplements? Yep, yeah, for example, here's Agnes, my regular egg laying chicken. Go ahead, Agnes. And now here's Mildred, my vitamin supplement enhanced chicken. Do your thing, Mildred. That's a ton of eggs. And one tired chicken. Here now, put on these life vests, fellas. Why do we need life vests? I'm going to fire up Vera, my vitamin supplement enhanced milking cow. Okay, get ready. What in the world? Look out! Get in the canoe, fellas, quick! Holy cow, so to speak. <laughs> here, I'll fire up the Evan Root and get us out of here. It's a whole sea of milk. Yeah, thousands and thousands of gallons of milk. Speaking of thousands of gallons, you fellas want to see how we make the fertilizer? No. no. Okay, here's the shoreline. Before you go, how about a quick vitamin supplement enhanced snack, fellas? I suppose. Here you go. That's just a big log from a dead tree, Hank. Yep, fiber. <laughs> so was that a realistic depiction of the uh, positive benefits of vitamin supplements? You mean an alter uh, alternative earth? <laughs> uh, it must be, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can get quite those results, but vitamin supplements we have established are good for you. Well, a vitamin can be located anywhere, you know, in the world. I mean, in in a in a tree, in the ground, um, in in a in a plant, um, but but a supplement is something that's created by human beings for human beings. Well, there you go, right? I mean, there. is that is that that that's is that a, a, a good beginning to the definition? But vitamins we know are essential for health. I think we can all accept that. Why then would we bother with vitamin supplements? Well, because Unfortunately, the um, all vitamins that that would be available to us that actually work um, uh, come in the food that we consume, and unfortunately, the f vitamin content in food depends on s the soil that it's grown in, and because um, we have been relying upon artificial nitrogenous fertilizers to grow our food uh, the those fertilizers tend 
you know, have tended to deplete the soil of the uh, minerals um, and necessary, uh, you know, factors that, that grow healthy plants and ultimately end up in the plant uh, that we consume. Based on that principle, then, have we over the decades been experiencing foods which are less full of nutrients and essential vitamins? Absolutely. There are instances where assays, chemical assays of an orange, you know, uh, have actually shown zero vitamin C in them. That's pretty horrifying. So yeah. we're dealing with that, and probably on a micro level, there's not much we can do about that. And the mineral content of you know various types of food varies dramatically with the um, uh, with the with, with the way in which it is grown. So if it's grown in um, you know tended to uh, you know organically uh, you know raised crops. The soil tends to be more rich in nutrient density, right? And uh, whereas in commercial soils, um, you know, the nutrient density definitely, you know, has been shown in a number of different um, studies to be nutrient poor. So if we're getting these foods now, which are not full of the nutrients and vitamins we have experienced perhaps in the distant past, we need to make up for that, that, that lost intake. Is that right? Yes. I mean, that's one, of the, that's one of the issues. Yeah. And then, of course, the other issue is that the environment itself is so much more challenging to a human organism than it was 100 years ago based on, and we've talked about this many times, but based on the uh, toxicity levels of the air, water, and soil right? created by, uh, you know, as, as, as it used to be uh, marketed, better living through chemistry. I'm guessing then, for, for these reasons... <laughs> that was back in, I think, the back in the, in the 50s or 60s. I'm going to guess 60s. That sounds yeah. very 60s yeah. to me. But I'm guessing for these reasons, because of the less nutrient-rich soil, as well as all the other hazardous environmental factors we're dealing with these days, we have maybe more of a need to supplement our vitamin intake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do have patients who say, why do we have to take supplements? Can't we get everything from our food? And my answer to that question is, I wish we could. I wish we could. <clears throat> but the fact that you're in my office tells me that, you know, um, that that might be a problem, right? Because I've, I've shared with you many, many, many times that we eat our way into our ill health. And I've, I've proven that in my clinic over and over because... That's how I help my patients uh, restore their health. That's how they dig themselves out of the, uh, you know, the medications that they were put on and even um, eliminate the need for some surgeries that they were scheduled for. This happens, you know, on a weekly basis in my clinic. So it sounds very reasonable to believe that vitamin supplementation is necessary and healthy. How do we go about determining which vitamins we should be supplementing and how much of those supplements we should be taking? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good question, uh, a couple of good questions. But I actually want to backtrack a little bit because um, it's very important to understand the backdrop of vitamin supplements in this country before we ever get to that. Um, you know, there, there, there have been a number of, uh, uh, well, actually, you'll see on occasion um, in the media various types of articles or even uh, programs, uh, the un most unfortunate being the, uh, a PBS program, and um, although I like PBS in general, they allowed this um, uh, frontline program which was basically a hit piece on vitamins in the vitamin industry. Uh, this was back in, I think, 2016. And yet, the, um, uh, the, 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 the program contained promotions for cheese it cheesy chicken bites and Dr. Pepper, um, you know, as, as, as part of its presentation. On CBS? <laughs> yeah, as part of its... As part of its 
presentation. So this, and I this, thought the uh, irony health, this the, health program underwritten by right, cheesy chicken rice. right exactly, um, and I thought, oh my gosh, uh, you know the irony is just not lost on me uh, when you have an investigative journalism piece supposedly concerned about health and well-being of consumers um, that was, uh, you know, completely, uh, you know, undermined by their embrace of cheese it cheesy chicken bites and Dr. Pepper. Um, you know, uh, just folks, just know that if that's the underwriting, um, uh, you know, support for the upcoming program on health, Duck. <laughs> According Should- to that frontline episode you're referencing, Paul, the vitamin supplement industry in the U.S. is about a $30 billion a year industry. They do not indicate what cheesy chicken bites are doing every year in terms uh, of sales. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> so $30 billion, but, though. But my point here is is that every once in a while, folks, you're going to, you're going to uh, uh, be exposed to to media, uh, you know, whether it be uh, radio or television or or the web or whatever, as to why, um, you know, vitamin supplements are so potentially harmful to you. Um, Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't some bad behavior out there. And some people wanting to make a ton of money might be, uh, you know, pushing a bad product. But that doesn't mean, you know, that that shouldn't taint the entire industry. Um, uh, So and, and, you know, of course, that's that's oftentimes a departure point for some of these hit pieces. So Uh, and usually you'll find that uh, the uh, the supplements that are, uh, you know, part of the bad acting crowd are things like weight loss supplements, Uh, you know, decrease your your appetite supplements, even. Um, uh, you, you know, insomnia supplements, um, you know, those types of things, uh, uh, and 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 uh, you know, things like uh, supplements that are supposedly on their own going to increase your energy, like energy drinks or energy supplements. Of those, yeah, those things in general, first of all, are um, uh, you know not very uh, appropriate for your health in the first place. Because any supplement worth its salt, any supplement that you expect to work, is derived from food, not in the chemistry lab. So why should, why should a product that is food be regulated as a, as a medical device? Well, it shouldn't. But the reason that there is a push for that is because... The pharmaceutical industry would love to get rid to get rid of its competition, right? Would, why wouldn't any competitor want to get the edge? And um, and the funny thing is, is that they argue out of both sides of their mouth. On the one hand, they argue that vitamin supplements don't work, and they don't really address, you know, you know, the health. They won't increase the health of people. But on the other hand, they want the vitamin supplements to be recognized as uh, medical devices like medications, right? And should be uh, should come up to the standards of um, of uh, uh, you know medications. Which, by the way, um, you know I, I take issue with you know most often, at least at some point, you know, in every weekend. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they yes, they argue out of both sides of their mouth. They say supplements. Don't work, but supplements should be regulated, uh, you know, as medications, as if they are medical devices. So what reductionism does with respect to vitamin products is to say, we can isolate this particular ingredient and produce it in a laboratory with some consistency and we will call this our standard for a vitamin. And that standard will be measured 
in the product that we produce, ultimately. You see what I'm saying? I do, but in effect, are they producing then products which may be ineffective? Correct. Or or just don't do what they're supposed to be doing? You are producing drugs. You're producing medications. You're not producing the actual you know, uh, vitamin complex. But they are medications under a different name. They're Correct. They're marketed as vitamins. But Correct. But in effect, by making these adjustments in the laboratory, they've created medications. That's what... Exactly. That's exactly right. They've created medications. Exactly. So and they-, they have... They can have side effects. For example, ascorbic acid is a perfect example. Where... Um, if you take, if you consume too much ascorbic acid, you'll experience diarrhea. That's a side effect, but that's not a side effect from consuming, you know, too much vitamin C complex in food. How do we as consumers know then what is real and what is not in terms of vitamin supplements? How do we know we're getting something that's going to be effective in the way we want those vitamins to be? Yeah. Um, well, you'll know, number one, by utilizing the, uh, you know, the technology that we use in, in Acunatural Family Healthcare. The nutrition response testing is really important, and um, the, the source of the vitamin product. Standard process, in my mind, is the finest, and it's the first, vitamin supplement that was ever created for human consumption, um, uh, you know, commercially. Was that was to... that was created by Dr. Royal Lee back in 1929, um, and those supplements uh, he had perfected a process of of concentrating. Um, <clears throat> first of all, identifying the content of vitamins and minerals and various types of food, and then concentrating those into a a supplement, a capsule, or a pill. If you're seeing something that's marketed as a vitamin supplement that promises an increase in energy, for example, or weight loss, those promises themselves should tell you that maybe this product isn't as advertised. Well, I mean, perhaps, but 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 they do edge toward that line, you know, uh, uh, where, um, you know, they, they, they may contain ingredients that are, are, are really not, you know, f- food-oriented you know, containing things that they shouldn't contain. And those ingredients might include what? Medications of some sort. Okay. So, and you wouldn't know that at all. I mean, there would be nothing on the label. You're just buying something that says multivitamin, take this and be well. Correct. But you have no idea that it's been adjusted to an extent that, in fact, it's no longer doing what it says it does. And and I'm making this this claim based on, you know, uh, factual history of some of these some of these supplements so i'm guessing bottom line here again is that we want vitamin supplements it's a good thing supplement your diet with these things because we're not getting the vitamins we need from our food which is produced in ways that is not necessarily healthy that are not necessarily healthy or from soil that isn't as healthy as it should be however among the multivitamins available there are issues so you have to be careful about what you're buying and what you're consuming. If you look at the label of a product, a vitamin product, and you see thousands of a percent of, say, C or D or E or A or whatever, um, it is likely to be a fractionated or, a, or, or synthetically produced product. So when they're fractionated, are they advertising them as having more of what's good for you by thousands of percents? Yes, Mm-hmm. Well, that's not good. Yeah, that's that's, just not a that's good usually thing. what you'll see. Now, what is when I use the term reductionism? What I'm saying is is that you're reducing what you you take a whole something or other and you're reducing it down to something less, right? And um, fractionated vitamins, which is what we are talking about here, the idea that you can find an active ingredient like a vitamin um, is the is is the notion uh, that um, you can find the active ingredient or the most critical piece of a watch vitamins are are functional they have a function they create a function 
And that function is to maintain, you know, certain metabolic processes in the body, which in turn reflects health. And um, it, it, the, the, my, my, my analogy here to a watch is what is the function of a watch? The function of a watch is to tell you time. It's to keep time. So if using a reductionist approach, you'd say, what is the most critical piece of a watch that allows it to function, to keep time? Well, I'm sure you could get a number of different answers to that using a reductionist approach, because no. almost any answer would be correct. What happens is, is you take this watch, and like a chemist, you put it in a, you know, a highly acidic or highly alkaline solution, and you break it down. You pull it apart. You take off the watch face, and you take out the stem, and you take out the gears, and you take off the hands and whatnot. What 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 have you ultimately done? One more note, you can get a free chapter of Paul Rosen's book, The Missing Piece. Just go to his website, acunatural.com, acunatural.com, and fill out the dialogue box that pops up. Rest assured, no information you provide will ever be shared with anyone else. So, what are you waiting for? Get going on your personal road to wellness today.